Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. We're on to episode three, which is a continuation of a five part series of sections in PCC2. We will concent keep concentrate now on part three, mechanical repairs. Article 301 begins with the topic of replacement of pressure components and it includes procedures for components such as vessels, valves, instruments, fittings, flanges, and plugs, etc. Include subassembly, pipe spools, vessel heads, shells, and uh, provides replacement in kind modifications. Here's a summary of Article 302, freeze plugs. Very, very big topic, a lots to talk about. I'll give you a high level summary. So it's a basically an isolation technique. It's cryogenic cooling of the outer wall of a pipe and freezing the contained liquid to form a solid plug. There's a picture to the, to the right over here and then a, there's some frost that would typically build up on a freeze plug connection. So what's the cooling supply? Well, it's either carbon dioxide or liquid nitrogen. There's some differences between the two. Um, basically, there's some restrictions on uh, what ASME is saying. They're saying, you know, they revise not going over 2,500 pounds of pressure for, you know, field repairs. And there's a few little caveats in there as well. And, um, unless you do more engineering. Nitrogen, um, nitrogen lines can be done for big diameter pipes up to 48 inches. And, but carbon dioxide is for smaller di uh, pipe diameters. They were saying up to four inches in diameter. Article 303 goes through damaged threads in tapped holes, which is a very common problem. A lot of threads in a refinery. And so it goes through some recommendations of how to repair damaged studded thread connections. And there's three basic uh, methods are shown. Basically, uh, it involves some drilling to tap to a larger hole and replace existing size fastener. It involves drill and tap to a larger hole and insert a helical coil and threaded inserts. It involves also uh, a third procedure, which is fill the hole with weld metal and then re-tap the holes. So those are the three tricks that, you, that are documented in 303. Article 304 has to do with flaw excavation and weld repair. Now, of course, there's two types of cracks that you'll find. You'll find surface cracks like here, or you'll find, whoops, down here, you'll find embedded flaws. Those are the two types of flaws. So uh, you, you either, you know, repair the flaws like by blending it out, or you have to go ahead and you have to use like a well disposition method. So you have to create a cavity and then fill it in. So those are the two primary strategies that are involved in 304. Step one is the excavation, flaw removal, and drilling out the crack tips. So uh, especially for, uh, for a lot of brittle materials, like uh, when I worked at the steel foundry was, was like uh, cast irons and stuff where very brittle cracks would propagate very fast. Most important thing is to drill out that tip. 
and, uh, and and that's a common method. So you take a drill and you, you drill that tip out and make sure it's gone, that crack. Um, there's some NDE requirements, follow FFS criterion for evaluation of, of um, you know, the cracks and how much you would remove. And then uh, step three, you know, remember that if you need to do welding um, on that surface repair, that procedure should be, uh, have, you know, be registered with, with the applicable code. And uh, if it's a pressure vessel, then there should, there needs to be an alteration report in, uh, in Canada, at least. Uh, NDE uh, is, is in the fourth part of the, of the procedures that are in Article 304, and it provides a very good roadmap of, of your options. Article 305 has to do with flange repair and conversion. So this may involve refurbishing flanges for repair. It can re involve a gasket conversion flange modifications. For example, um, a ring joint to a race faced connection. Now there's a few uh, issues to be involved, but remember that thickness of the flange, flange thickness is a key ingredient for determining um, your rating of your, of your equipment. So there's a few strategies. So you can go to ASME and, and check the minimum dimensions. That would be the first step to do to see how much room you have left. And, um, and so the other one is you can go ahead uh, ask me says you can go ahead and do an evaluation. You can go to ask me or the pressure vessel code section eight division one mandatory appendix number two. You can also go and do a well buildup and machine and refurbish it. But remember that you have to have your well procedures and because of the thickness of your part, you may require to have post weld heat treatment by code or if it's if it's sour service. The third the third issue uh, well the issue the third method is a split ring flange assembly, and um, and that involves uh, you know like a adding up a, a split ring flange, and and so the code uh, or ASME talk goes through flatness and finish requirements but it's because of course well, that's a big deal when you're refurbishing to ensure a seal and it also goes through the uh, NDE requirements. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos and we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.